Hey, how is it going? The time is 7.43 p.m. on Sunday, August 1st, 2021. Coming at you from Berlin. Uh, different house. Didn't know where I was going to be staying. Still don't really know long term where I'm going to be staying. But I last minute found a place where I'll presumably be um, until the 25th of August. So that's just gives me a little bit of breathing room in terms of um, my life, which continues to be fucking crazy in this journey <laughs> to get here. Um, I want to get this out of the way uh, just so that uh, anybody who is in Berlin and listening to this, I have a probably show on Tuesday, um, this Tuesday, which is what, uh, in the, the third, um, at 8 p.m. at the Wall Comedy Club in Berlin. It's called uh, Comedy Roulette, and basically the performers are decided by a spinning wheel, but priority is given to comedians who are new to Berlin and who hadn't performed on previous weeks, um, and people from my comedy class are going to be coming. So uh, even if I don't get up, which I would say there's probably a 90% chance that I will, um, yeah, come enjoy some comedy. Come say hello to me. Um, and it's a donation-based show. Oh, you know when you get that like weird like frog thing in your f- throat? Get some like m- mucus bubble and all of a sudden you sound like fucking Kermit, you know, or Ray Romano. Um, anyway, uh, donation-based show. So it is free. You know, they do recommend five to ten euros donation. I assume that goes to the performers. Um, and yeah, it, it should be a good time. So what else has happened since I <laughs> since I last talked to you? Like I honestly don't even know where to begin. Um Let's just I let's just go through the week, I suppose. I lost track of the days. I have – Berlin is like a hardcore party city. And the reality is like when I don't have a system in place, like I, I like to think that I'm really bad at uh, having routines imposed upon me. But the reality is like so many human beings – I think I do need structure. I think when left to my own devices, like, yeah, I can get some things done. But I'm always going to opt for – I'm very bad at saying no when people have like plans that they suggest to me. Um, so the self-discipline, I don't know, it comes and it goes, right? I'll quit drinking for four months and then comes back with a with a fucking vengeance. Um, I have been offered cocaine every night I've gone out. I have not taken it every night I've gone out, but I took it three nights I went out, which is the most cocaine I've ever done in my life. Um, you know, for me, it's like a take it or leave it thing, like maybe once or twice a year, you know, if someone's offering it. But the thing is, like, everybody's offering it here. And this actually happened in New York when I returned uh, last year from Ecuador during the pandemic that was also happening back then. Um, We're like New Yorkers, which is so friendly with their cocaine. (laughs) I was like, all right. Um, Anyway, uh, so that's a thing that's been happening. Um, Same with cigarettes. Like, I'm a one to two cigarette guy a year, and I think I've smoked three to four cigarettes this week, which, like, to a cigarette smoker, is like, that's amazing. But, like, to me, I'm like, whoa. I don't, it's it's really, for me, that's like a social thing. Like, it does nothing for me, except usually give me a headache, a sore throat, and, like, those fingers that smell like your grandpa's old leather chair, you know, the next day. Um, But I'm not too worried about, those specific things becoming a thing says every person who ends up becoming an addict um it is hard to go out for me and not drink and i want to go out because i want to meet people and the hostel that i was staying at or the airbnb i was staying at before you couldn't get any light whatsoever uh the wi-fi barely worked in there there was just no amenities when you go into the hallway like germans are very into energy conservation which is great but they had a, a a timer that would like literally turn off after three seconds so from the time you opened your door to go to the sink in like their little mini not real kitchen and you went to turn on the water at the faucet, the light would already be turned off and you'd be running into shit. Um, Another wild thing about that place, which I guess is fairly common in, in Germany, if not other parts of Europe, is they have these like locks where you, they lock from both sides with a key, meaning as a lock works, like you keep people out of your house, but also you can keep people in your house. <laughs> so like you need a key to turn into the lock to get out, which is 
absolutely wild to me because my dad was a firefighter for 30 years. And part of that was being a fire marshal, which involves like all the building inspections. And that is super illegal in the United States because God forbid there was a fire. You know, you wake up at 3 a.m. It's smoky. You're disoriented. You know, you go to run out. You, you grab the wife and kids and, and the little puppy dog. And you find you, 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 you kick open a door, you, you somersault, you, you jump over, a, you use like the bed, right? It's like a flame retardant shield. And then you get to the door and you're like, ah, fuck, I forgot my keys. <laughs> and then um, you die, you know, that's how that happens. So uh, that is insane to me that it works that way. And this had a key required to get out of the unit, the actual like the apartment unit and then the apartment building itself. So it's like, how is that fucking in any way still allowed these days? I'm just really surprised by that. Um, But yeah, uh, uh, so I went out to I've been trying to get booked on shows and a lot of the, the mics here, like you actually get booked out like weeks in advance via Facebook. So uh, like I said, hopefully Tuesday will work out. Um, otherwise I definitely have a, a spot on the 25th. I'll let you guys know about, but, um, I went out, I think it was Thursday night and I'm just kind of like discovering new places, right? Cause Berlin has like a lot of quirky different bars and you really don't know what you're getting until you walk in. Um, and there was this like little hole in the wall with Christmas lights outside. That's a, like a popular way to attract people into bars here is to put Christmas lights out because sometimes it's just like a lone bar on like a block with otherwise closed businesses. So it's just a way to let you know that there's something going on there. And uh, I walk into this bar and there's like a little dance floor and it's like way bigger than you would ever think from the outside. It's it's not huge. It's just like it's, it goes back deep and... um. I met the, the the bartender there is an American, and she was super cool to talk to. And then I met another American dude who who just moved here, um, all like having a great time. Um, and uh, I, because Germany is so cash focused, like they honestly are very behind digitally speaking compared to like their European neighbors. In Barcelona, you'd buy a fucking chiclet at the corner store for 30 cents and they would gladly accept credit cards uh here i would say like 90 percent of kind of um you know mom and pop shops but also like just like big restaurants bars they do not accept credit cards uh so i had you have to constantly go to the atm to take out money and because there's fees involved with all that you obviously want to get as much as you can um, in, in one trip. So I had taken out like 240 euros and then went to this bar, bought a couple drinks. Um, and at one point the American bartender bought me a free shot and I didn't know it was free. And so I thought like I pulled my wallet out to pay and then was kind of like lingering around, like waiting for her to ask me to pay. And she didn't. Um, so great, cool. I continue on the night. And then like, I went to get another drink sometime later and I reach into my pocket and my fucking wallet wasn't there. And I'm like, what? No. I've never been pickpocketed in my life. Like, and I go, I look around the bar, I tell the bartenders, I tell the guy I was talking to, like, we, nobody can find it. So either when that free shot was bought, I had, like, maybe brought my wallet out and, like, placed it on the bar, like, right by my hand, but I'm pretty good about not being negligent about that stuff and it was taken at that point or I was straight up pickpocketed um and so (laughs) 240 euros my American debit card my American credit card my um FU student card which also serves as like the pass to ride for free on the trains my healthcare card uh my American um driver's license my old driver's license from like 2010 which was like just a cool relic to have when you know I had more hair and was like 60 pounds lighter um I look really good in that photo and I don't have that anymore I was so I could not fucking believe it and so it's been this huge like rigmarole thing I I thank god have a German debit card that was in my phone case um and as such was not taken um however I didn't have money left in my German bank account. So then it became this thing of like transferring money from my American account to my German one and obviously fees associated with that and time with that. And it's just been a fucking journey. Then there's the housing thing. Like 
where am I going to stay next? And I, you know, thought I was going to find out about this job on Wednesday. Um, I was told basically that I was going to get an offer and then I didn't, it didn't come. And so I contacted the person the next day, didn't hear anything, contacted again the next day, didn't hear anything. And I'm like, ah, I don't, I need to know what my budget is. Cause I'm, this Airbnb is up on Sunday. I need to know where I'm going next. And that's going to really depend on how much money I have to spend. So I start looking at other things on Vege Gesucht, which is like, um, the housing website that the people use in Germany to find uh, flat shares, like, you know, with roommates. And it's just, a, it's such a struggle. The housing is so hard here. I've lived in San Francisco and New York, and genuinely, I think this is the most difficult place that I've ever looked for uh, for housing. Um, this city, as I've said before, reminds me so much of, like, San Francisco, like, 15 years ago. Like, burgeoning startup scene, um, hella fucking illegals, <laughs> rentals, you know, sub, sub letters of sub letters of sub letters of sub letters just driving up the price. Um, and one of the, um, new German friends that I met just out drinking, um, which is how I've met a lot of people here, um, invited me out for drinks again the next night. And I met up with her, uh, the two of them. And she's like, oh, I happen to have a friend who has said he's looking for a place. I get in touch with this guy, and I really I'm short on time at this point. Um, and you know, there's like two or three days I have left. And we end up we end up getting in touch. He's concerned because he's like, I mean, this guy's like a fucking stranger in my house. Like, I don't know who he is. But I, I saw the place. Um, he draws up like a very formal contract, like for subletting. I have to pay a deposit. Um, which, so for these 25 days with the deposit, it's like 900 euros. Obviously that deposit's refundable, um, which is, which is 500 euros. But, um, then there's like, oh, well the money doesn't go through. This is on a, on a Saturday that we confirm that I'm going to be paying this and it doesn't go through for like two or three business days. So he just has to basically trust me. And at this point he's left already. Like he and his girlfriend are in Spain and, uh, but Okay. Uh, so he says, yeah, I can actually move in last night. So he had given the keys to a neighbor, but he didn't tell me which neighbor it was. And so I like texted him, but like he was out enjoying himself in Spain, a little drunk, um, and wasn't responding. And so I like packed up everything, cleared out my Airbnb and like taken a taxi over here. And then I couldn't figure out where I'm supposed to fucking go. Like, how do I get into the building? Who has the keys? Eventually, I just like buzz all the different people. A guy, super nice dude, answers. Um, I'm drenched in sweat with my fucking hyperhidrosis, and I'm carrying, you know, like a giant traveler's backpack and three bags, like in this random ass American guy is like, Can we speak English? Shows up looking like some sweaty coke addict or something. And, uh, but again, very hospitable. He has a WhatsApp group where he knows who the guy is where you can contact all the neighbors. So he ends up finding the guy with the keys. We get the keys. Then we go to open the door and I can't get the keys to work. Like there's two locks. There's a, there's a, a big main one and then like a small one. And the big, the big key works for the big lock, but the small keys don't work for the small lock. And so I go back to the guy. I'm like, Hey, I can't get in. And then he tries it and he's like, yeah, what? I don't know what's going on. He sees, I have all my bags just drenched again in sweat. And he's like, why don't you come down to my unit? He lets me put my bags down. He's like, let's have a beer. I was like, I actually have a beer on on me <laughs> um, if uh, you want to get one. I just don't have two. And he's like, no, no, you keep your beer. I'm going to buy us two beers. And he runs to the Spady. He gets beer. He has me, you know, I'm sitting in his house. I come. He comes back. He's on the phone with his girlfriend asking if I can stay the night if need be. Like an insanely nice guy. So we end up chatting for like an hour. Um such a cool hospitable thing that he did and I get a text back from the guy who stays here and we get on the phone we have we have the keys and he's talking German with the other with the neighbor and we come back up and it turns out that the big key for the big lock is also the big key for the small lock now if you were to look at these things you'd be like there's no way that that thing fits it's a third the size of the other keyhole but it did and we got in and uh, I made it I survived. Um, so uh, I am so relieved to have, like I said, a little bit of breathing room. I really hope I get this uh, job this coming week. Um, that will also help solve a lot of problems. Um, yeah, 
uh, oh, I, like I said, I lost my student card, which is like my bus ID. So I went yesterday to FU, the Fly Universität Berlin or whatever. It's like an hour by train, one way to get there. And they're, they have these machines where you replace your card, but there's just no good way when you have it stolen. Like Germans love their fucking bureaucracy. And again, things not being technologically oriented. I turns out I had to go online, fill out an affidavit, like... It's a big process. They're reviewing to see if they can authorize my card being replaced. Like, it's just, it's nothing's easy, you know. I chose to move to a country coming from a country that's not in the European Union. And this country is is a little bit difficult to move to. And doing it during a pandemic is fucking very hard. And Berlin is a very hard city in terms of housing, like I said. Um, but while I was over there, since I couldn't, the trip was kind of for nothing to go out there, I went to this Italian restaurant and my German is so bad, and it shouldn't be so bad. I am really am, uh, upset that it's so bad. And I went to go pay for this pizza, which, by the way, I was told was like a personal pan pizza. Like, I'm trying to lose weight, even though I'm doing the exact opposite. And they bring out, like, a giant large pizza. Um, cool, cool. They don't cut their pizza here, I guess. Maybe they do. But this one wasn't cut. But I was told that Germans eat pizza with a fork and knife, and I certainly had to cut it with the fork and knife. That was super interesting to me. Um, but I ain't going to be eating pizza with no fork. So I did the New York fold the slice thing, and yeah. Um, but when I went to pay, the guy came over, and I had the check, and I pulled out, like I said, cash, of course. Um, I was like, kann ich bitte benzolen? And he like looked at me like, what? And I was like, uh, ben, Benzolen? Kann ich bitte Benzolen? Can I pay? And like, he sees the check and I'm handing him money and he's like, hey, hey, what? I don't understand. I'm like, so I look up, can I pay on Google Translate and it's like, Kann ich bitte Benzolen? Now I, I had said Benzolen, not Benzolen. Totally I understand like words are different. But I'm like, man, if I went to a microwave store and I said, Hi, can I have a micro wavi? And they'd they wouldn't say like what? I have no possible idea what this guy wants in this context at this microwave store. What could a micro wavi be? You know, like come on, German guy, cut me a little slack here. <laughs> I'm trying, but my German is uh schlecht. Uh what else? Oh, yeah, there's a place called Musty Burger. That's a thing. Very funny to me. Oh, the sweaty sock on the sink. In my hostel, uh, or again, the Airbnb, I went to go pour water, and there was like a fucking like black t-shirt or sock wrapped around the tap. And I'm like, what is going on here? Why is this? And I, like, I undid it. But then I was like, man, this is like really purposefully on here. I don't, it's no accident, right? Um, and it's like it's a guy cleaning, doing his laundry one piece at a time. <laughs> and... I asked on Instagram, and the best answer that we could ascertain from a couple German friends was that I guess the water in Berlin is very hard with lime and calcium deposits, and so it's a poor man's way to filter those out by, like, tying some sort of kind of mesh netting clothing article around it. Uh, definitely was very... Uh, a little disconcerting if you don't have that context where you're like, I don't want your sw your sweaty sock water, you know? Um, yeah. Let's talk about some great things about being here. Fucking the Turkish food. I was in Turkey. I think I may have said it in this podcast. I genuinely found the, like, the dinner kebab, like those kinds of things. I find it better in Berlin than I do in... Uh, Turkey. Actually, we did talk about that with Carl Wilde on the show. Um, yeah, it kind of combines the, the 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 vegetables and so forth, and like that heartiness, um, the bread here with like the yeah the Turkish the shawarma and all that stuff. It's really fucking good and addictive and and cheap and like a real nice meal. Um, cool. <laughs> Again, parting is super cool here. I mean, people have, by and large, been hospitable. There is, like, the fucking grumpy-ass bouncer aspect where, you know, you have to be cool enough to go into a place. But, like, 
It's like, come on, man. I go through life with a little bit of joy, smile. I have all sorts of mental health issues, apparently, and I'm depressed. I love to laugh and smile. I can't imagine a world devoid of that. Just fucking wearing all black all the time, you know, with your fucking septum pierced and shaking your head after people who can't get into your bar. Anyway, um, that's good for now, right, guys? That's a, that, we did 20 minutes here. Uh, thank you so much for listening again uh, Tuesday at the Wall Comedy Show Club, whatever. Just Google the Wall Comedy. Um, really cool, tiny space with like, but like great crowd um, and uh, hopefully some great comedians, including myself. Rate, review the podcast if you wouldn't mind in iTunes. Follow me on Instagram at Eric on the World. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. Otherwise, until next week, no matter where you are in the world, be well and be loved. Romance, throw itself off the 30th floor, get up.